All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Timmy Feedy. So what I thought I'd do today is actually just talk you through um, some sort of Japanese knife stuff or just generally knives as a standard, what, what you should and shouldn't be looking for if you want to get into sharpening yourself or that kind of thing. So I've had a few people ask me about what knives to get in terms of recommendations. And I mean, you've got your kind of global knives which are pretty good if you don't want to spend too much money a pretty good standard knife to get hold of um, they're pretty solid they hold a good edge you can sharpen them back to a pretty nice edge on them um, so yeah I mean if you're going to go for a slightly cheaper knife and want something that's good nicely balanced cuts well and holds a good edge then it's a good knife to go for but if you want to go for something a little bit more advanced or get into your Japanese knives properly, then this is gonna be a good guide to what, what to look, look for, brands you could go for, and then how to look after them, store them, sharpen them, all that kind of stuff. So if you're gonna start out, the best thing I can recommend, you don't need to go super fancy with loads of different sorts of knives. I'd recommend you go for a 210 millimeter knife like this. This is called a Guto. Um, which is your, your kind of standard Japanese chef's knife and then you've got a little 150 millimeter petty knife and you can see that uh, just like this so if you've got those two knives so your 210 and your 150 mil that lets you do your little kind of detailed kind of little stuff and this is kind of covers off pretty much everything else if you can't afford to go and get a load of other different sorts of knives and this will set you up really nicely these are Takamura knives which you can get in Australia from chefsarmory.com.au. Um, they sell them. You can also go, if, you, if you're in the States or even in the UK, you can go to mctkitchen.com and they will ship to the UK. It's, it's based in America, but obviously if you're in uh, Canada or the US, then you can get them from them. And they sell the full range from the Takamura Red to the Pros, which is what this one is. And these are the slightly more fancy I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's like Sumunuganashi um, knives. There's also the Takamura Octagon knives, which are really nice as well, which I happen to have one here. This is a little um, Santoku knife. Now for me, this is a really good triple range to get. You get your Santoku, which is this kind of shorter 160 mil blade, as you can see there. Um, this is probably my favorite knife to use all the time. It's quite thick as well in terms of the depth of it. Um, it's a really great knife and they hold such a beautiful edge but if you can only go two i'd go the guto and the 150mm petty knife if you can if you want to go a bit further you can go for the santoku which is this one which are great knives um so that's a really good range to go for there in terms of takamura they're quite difficult to sharpen i find it took me a while to get the hang of it there are certain other knives which are a little bit easier to sharpen which um yeah can be made a bit I don't know, you, you can, it depends on the steel that they're made from, depending on how easily they take an edge. So generally the harder the steel, the trickier it is to do it, and then the sort of edge you can put on it varies depending on your skill level. Um, I mean, what sort of edge you want to put on it. I mean, these come with something called a Hamaguri edge, which is a very, very fine edge, um, which makes it a super slick cutting motion, but, um, it's difficult to do and I'm to be honest I'm, I'm still learning how to do that properly it takes a lot of practice so um, but you don't need to really worry about that too much um, the one thing you should know with Japanese knives like this is that the edges are slightly more brittle so they can't hold up to like whacking through bones and all that sort of stuff this is just meant for general chopping of vegetables and meat without bones in essentially so um, as long as you do that you'll be fine but they are slightly more fragile so you have to be careful um, even things like chunks of rock salt on your chopping board or something like that if you chop through a bit you could chip the blade quite easily so you do you do have to be careful of things like that and also when you're chopping like garlic or something if you've done that and then you if you're one to move your knife along the edge of the board to pick it up and then put it in the pan you want to avoid that with these knives really um you can use the back of the knife back edge of it that's probably the thing to do but or just get used to not doing that but i still do it from time to time so i mean what can you do so yeah so that's kind of the range of knives that i'd go for so let's just pull this one out of the way for a second so you got your 210 chef's knife and your 150 mil petty knife that's where i'd start if i was you 
you don't have to go quite up to the Takamura level in terms of expense because they're you know quite expensive. You're talking, you know, three hundred and fifty dollars just for this knife. And to be honest, this knife was the same because it's a slightly higher end blade. Um, but generally speaking, if you're going for a decent Japanese chef's knife like this, two ten, you'd be spending about one hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars Australian. That is on a pretty decent brand um, that kind of gets you started you can just go infinitely higher if you want to so it's just um, entirely up to you really <laughs> how high you want to get but be warned it does become an obsession so you'll find yourself going up to like crazy levels like this bad boy which is a, um, a Fujiwara knife which is just the absolute awesome just ridiculous this is a white steel um, I think it's white number one steel, which is like quite high end. It will tarnish the edge. It will like kind of discolor because it's a carbon steel on on the actual cutting edge. Um, so you have to oil it, but and it does discolor, but it's supposed to do that. So yeah, this knife is just incredible. Um, but I've also got that and, and the Kiri blade, which is like those square edge blades that you see in like a lot of Asian cooking. Also, really nice knife. But like I said, you don't need to go to that extent. I mean, you can go fully up to the Chinese cleaver, but this is for detailed, really fine stuff. This isn't for going through bones. You can get like a, a, a chopper, which is a much thicker steel, which doesn't, so that the edge doesn't chip, but this will chip because it's quite fine. But that's just a standard like Hong Kong knife. So it's not the best steel, but it holds a sharp edge. So yeah, anyway, I could waffle about knives indefinitely. So yeah. If you're looking for a Japanese knife, definitely the 210 and the 150. I'll try not to keep repeating myself. Now, when you first get it, it will hold its edge for quite a long time because the steel does, because it's harder, it does hold its edge for longer. But the thing to do to maintain it over the first month or so, or six weeks, two months, you can get yourself one of these, which is, well, I made this, but essentially it's a leather strop. You can get just a big, Bit of leather and you just strop up and down like you see them doing uh in um kind of like your old school kind of hairdressers or if you're getting like a wet shave um but what i did with this is just a bit of two by four i got some leather just from a hardware store um and then i just glued it with some pva glue to this on both sides and just weighted it down let it dry overnight and that's it what i do with um this has got like a compound on it um, which you don't necessarily need to have but most Japanese knife sh stores will sell the compound and you just rub it up and down I, I do have some somewhere in a drawer I don't know where it is but yeah you just rub it up and down and coat it on it and then you essentially just run the knife up and down it like this always away from the edge and um, as you do this it just brings the edge back and just um, gets it back to that kind of razor sharp edge um, which is awesome. So you can really shave with that if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how you'd maintain it initially. <coughs> um, for people out there, for the vegetarians and the vegans who don't want to buy leather, you can do this with a bit of old um, denim material. So get some old jeans, cut a strip out, glue it on, put it on overnight, weighted down so it's nice and smooth, and then just trim it off. Um, so yeah, denim works really well. Um, you can also do it on paper, just like a pile of paper, and it, it does the same kind of principle, but leather or denim is probably the best option for people who don't mind leather, obviously go leather, but if you do, go denim. And when you do this, just when you do the PVA glue, spread a load on it and then get it completely flat with a old credit card or whatever and then put the thing on because I didn't do that on this side and it's not quite smooth and even whereas this side I did a lot better so um, yeah that's one thing to watch out for so yeah that you can make yourself but to be honest there are websites that sell these already pre-made um, but they're quite expensive so there's no point because you know a bit of two by four is like two bucks from hardware store and an old bit of leather you can either find from some old like welding apron i think this was actually a welding apron that i got for like 15 bucks or something and i just cut the bits out that i needed but um otherwise you can just find some leather from somewhere and so you could probably make this for like less than 20 dollars and it lasts forever really i mean not forever but it will last a long time um and then you just make another one so um obviously if you do a bit, get a sheet of leather just do a section of it keep the rest for the next time you need to put some more on so um, yeah so that's the most important thing initially to keep the knife maintained initially and that will just bring that edge back once it gets to a point where you start losing the edge completely 
you can you really with a Japanese knife you have to learn how to sharpen it properly on a whetstone so there are different options available to you with whetstones you can get a um, like a proper whetstone of which oh god knows where it is I don't use it anymore but uh, you, you have to pre-soak them for about 15-20 minutes and there's this different grit levels in the same way that sandpaper has grit levels so you generally you get three stones you'd have one which is your one for actually cutting the edge back into the knife which would be a four to five hundred grit um, then you have one thousand grit and then a three thousand grit so it gets gradually finer as you go up and then you do a three stage process to sharpen the knife and then you finish on your leather strop um, and they are available either through Amazon or through your Japanese knife shop of which we're very lucky in Sydney to have Chef's Armoury. If you live in Melbourne or I believe Adelaide they also have stores there um, but it is available all online as well. Um, otherwise yeah Amazon sells them or to be honest you know you'll find these little boutique knife shops you know in, in reasonably big cities I'm sure wherever, wherever you are so I'm sure they're around. Um, what I eventually did was I went from my um, kind of, they were synthetic sharpening stones that I bought, which you have to soak, but then I went on to this company called uh, Shapton, um, which do these kind of like ceramic, it's kind of like ceramic block attached to a bit of glass on the back, and then they sell this little um, thing for holding, holding it, and it just kind of sticks on, it's just rubber, and it, it kind of adheres to the glass really nicely so it doesn't slip. It's such a great system. You don't need to pre-soak these. Um, you literally just splash a bit of water on top and just keep, you know, and off you go, splash a bit more water and just keep going. I'll do a knife sharpening video maybe next, but to be honest, I'm, I'm still not that good at it, so there's probably better instructional videos for how to sharpen a knife online. So. I'm still learning. I went and did a course, and that was a few years ago, and now I just keep it up myself. And um, the basic principles I could probably show you, but there's, there's probably some much better uh, tutorials out there. But you definitely need to learn. It isn't that hard to learn the, the initial technique. It, the rest is just practice. So, um, so yeah, this shaft and stuff's really great. It's all, like I said, it's ceramic. You can get a flattening uh, diamond plated thing to keep the thing flat, which, I should probably get at some point, but anyway. Um, but this stuff's super hard, so it kind of, it takes quite a while for it to burn down. But, um, so yeah, and then these, it comes in a, I got a 500, I got a 1000, and I got a 3000. So that covers me off. If I'm going a slightly fancier knife, and I want to go a little bit more hardcore. I got these extra not uh, extra stones. So I actually got, ridiculously, I got a 16,000 and uh, 8,000, which is complete overkill, and I don't really use them, and I shouldn't really have bought them, because the finer they are, the more expensive they are, but anyway. Um, but like I said, your fine 500, 1,000, 3,000 gets you pretty nicely sorted, really. So, um, and that's got a nice holder. Like, you can buy this thing with those three weights of grit, and this nice holder, and this thing. I know it's probably about $500 all in, but once you've got it, <laughs> it lasts ages if you look after it and um, you know it's just it's a bit of an investment but it, it lasts a long long time so it's worth doing in my opinion so and like I said I find the shaft and stuff a lot easier because you don't have to pre the stones and um, you can just get it out get it on there splash a bit of water and off you go so you just got to keep it wet as you're going really so I found with the um, the other stones which are Ni Niwana I think the net the brand name was that it, they work great but the soaking thing and it was just a bit of a faff and I don't really like faffing too much so I just found this to be a lot more um, efficient way of doing it I can just get it out for fancy sharpen my knives it's a lot simpler so and this whole setup with the this block and everything it just works really well so yeah so that's that's really important the strop is probably the most important thing to get set up initially when you first get your Japanese knife um, because that really helps to keep that factory edge um, and if it's a really high-end knife like this, it's like hand sharpened from the, the Takamura um, factory essentially, which is all just this handmade, beautiful place in Japan. So um, it maintains that edge for a bit longer before you need to bother going into, into the sharpening itself. Because I guarantee you won't get the same edge on it when you first start sharpening these, these knives, um, the, the, when you first buy it. Once you get good enough, you will be able to achieve that kind of edge. But 
um, initially you won't be able to. So the longer you can kind of keep that maintained with your lever strop, uh, the better really. So, I mean, like I said, because the steel is so hard, it does keep its edge for quite a long time, which is another benefit for uh, Japanese knives. Like I've got this old school Sabatier, which is a carbon steel Sabatier knife. This is like really, really old knife now. Um, and uh, it's, um, it holds a really good edge once you get the edge on it, but it will pretty much lose that edge by the time you finish cooking one meal, essentially. By the time you've gone through and done everything, because it's a softer steel, it just loses its edge quicker, essentially. So um, so while it does hold a really beautiful edge and it's nicely balanced, this was the first knife I used when I was like, you know, five and six years old and chopping parsley from my parents and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, great knife, but it doesn't hold its edge as long. <laughs> the other thing you could get is a honing steel. This is a ceramic one, so similar material to this stuff. Now, with this thing, you don't really want to be using it on these sort of knives, really. Like, it's much better to maintain the edge on your leather strop, and when it needs properly sharpening, go onto your stones. But this can, in some instances, be okay. But there's certain knives I'd never use it on my like Fujiwara knives and I, I've got this other knife here which I can never remember the name of the actual blade it's a Kontsuku or something like that um, but this is a really really high-end steel and this is actually filled with carbon steel blade so I have to keep this thing oiled um, it does discolour. I mean, it is supposed to discolour but I kind of keep it in quite good condition but, um, but yeah, I'd never use this the steel with this sort of knife this is definitely maintaining on your strop and uh, on your ceramic stones and then always with these sort of knives you have this thing called a sayer which is this wooden sheath that goes over it a bit like a samurai sword I suppose um, and that just helps it protect the edge because I keep my knives in drawers which you shouldn't really do but when it's got a sayer on it that's okay and actually in this drawer I keep the loose ones that I don't have sayers for but I keep a um, a thick cotton towel in it so they can't slide around because um, it's a sliding around on the surface it would actually damage them but because this sits on a nice cotton towel it's absolutely fine so yeah that's a little tip that you can do if you're going to do that so I mean you could keep them on a magnetic thing as well which is kind of okay or in a wooden block but really the best thing is a uh, is a wooden sail like this um, and most Japanese shops sell them loose so if you have a knife that you don't have one for like this one I don't um, I could go and get one and have it for it but um, some of the higher end knives like these Takamoras come with these sayers so that's that's you know saves you 20 bucks um, but this one I keep in a wooden block up in the main bit of the kitchen because I use it all the time so and that's that's fine it keeps it stored and protected and it doesn't dull the edge or anything so you just have to be a bit careful with it really so yeah so there we go. I think that's probably covered things off pretty nicely. So we'll just cover everything again. So a 210 and a 150 mil petty knife. So a 210 Guto or chef's knife and a 150 mil petty knife. That sets you up for everything you're gonna really need in the kitchen unless you start getting into some ridiculous high level and you wanna do, you know, get bendable knives and all this sort of stuff. But really this covers you off. You don't, I mean, you can learn to use these knives for pretty much anything you want really. So. Um, if you want to go a little bit more go to a Santoku like this guy um, which is awesome and it's really nice because it's shorter so it's actually if you're not as confident or you don't like as long a knife this is a really good go between from a petty and a, and a chef's knife because it's got enough blade length to do pretty much everything so if you only can only get one knife get your Santoku that's what I do and this Takamura Santoku is just beautiful so good um, so yeah so there's your knives brands um, you know <coughs> they do seem quite expensive and like I said you can go anywhere from about $200 for a chef's knot like this up to like $2,000 or something so you know pick your poison and go for something that you know doesn't seem too unreasonable to yourself but um, I'd say a sweet spot would be about $250 for a decent brand that's made well um, Caden are a good knife that you're not going to go wrong with um, Takamura are brilliant if you want to go a bit higher up um, Fujiwara but they're dangerously sharp so they, they won't actually sell them to you if you don't know what you're doing because um, they're so sharp like they actually took them off their website at Chef's Armoury because they're just too dangerous so um, 
I don't know what it is. They just the, the edge on them is just scary. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, the other main thing, really important, get your own strop set up. Just a bit of two by four from a hardware store. Some leather, like a leather apron or whatever, or some old jeans, so denim. Um, cut it near to size, glue it on, trim it out nice and neat. There you go. That's that's set for ages, and that'll just help maintain that edge, keep it razor sharp initially. When it starts to lose its edge fully, that's when you need to get into like the wet stones. Um, like I said, I find the shaft and stuff really good, but it's all down to personal preference. You can go real stones, like proper natural stones, but they're really expensive. Like you're talking anywhere from $500 up to into the thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on the sort of stone it is. And in Japan, they, they only mine for these stones very, very rarely. So they're quite a commodity. It's almost an investment because they, they won't ever lose value really. So um, yeah, one day I might venture into the natural stone market but it's a lot of money just for a bit of stone so um, yeah so the shaft and stuff and like I said there's loads of tutorials online I know the Takamura guys have some really good instructional videos especially on how to put a hamaguri edge on their knives that's kind of quite advanced I do know for a fact that the guys at Chef's Armory have a tutorial video for sharpening knives as well which is really good and that's where I learned and went on my course with them I did this day course where they teach you um, in small groups which I highly recommend um, it, it gives you the basics and like I said the rest is just practice really so um, yeah that's kind of it really I think I've waffled enough to be honest with you I'm, I've been talking for far too long about this but yeah I just wanted to kind of go on and give you give a rough guide to people if you're looking at maybe getting started into it and just some things to look out for and and some things that's definitely worth having and you know how to store them with the sayers Le leather strop which is I think the most important thing and then obviously uh, wet stones and the brand of that it doesn't matter too much initially but whatever you can afford like you can get cheaper ones which will be fine but um, like I said I recommend Shapton because they last for a long time and there's no faffing with soaking or anything like that so um, yes there we go so thank you for tuning in uh, I've been Timmy Foodie and um, like, comment and subscribe and we'll be back with another video soon. I need to start ramping up the videos, I've been so busy with work, it's hard to stay motivated to actually film and edit when you're working nine hours a day on the computer doing other shit, so I probably shouldn't have sworn then, but anyway, never mind. Um, yeah, cheers guys, we'll be back with another video soon, cheers.